Live from Mount Olympus is produced by the Onassis Foundation and is a proud member of Tracks from PRX. <laughs> Did you hear that? It sounded like a baby. A baby? <laughs> you have a son? When the king of the gods appeared, what would you have me do? Traitor! You knew the oracle's prophecy. Your son will kill me. No! Father, what are you doing? Ah! Whoa! They go under. <laughs> Perseus, my little hero. I hope your first adventure is not your last. The Greek gods live high on Mount Olympus, but from time to time, we walk among you mortals, and wherever the gods move, stories are born. This story takes us aboard a rickety little boat off the coast of a small Greek island, where a fisherman gazes out to sea, deep in contemplation staring far into that distant place where dreams and wishes of a life yet to be lived may be found. But his reverie is broken when something on the water catches his eye, something big bobbing up and down on the waves. He casts his net and pulls the object in. Poseidon, what have you sent me? It's a wooden crate large enough to hold a grown man or woman. And a baby? What in the name of Olympus? You'll never take him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nobody is taking anybody, young lady. But if you'd like, you can take my hand and come on out of this box. Steady now. Mother and son had floated right into the nets of one of the mortal world's truly good men. Thank you. I can hardly see. It's so bright and it's been so long since we've seen the sun. Where are we? My fishing boat off the coast of Seraphos. See the beach right there? The name is Dictus, a humble fisherman. Where do you come from? That crate. Everything before is gone. I see. Well, in that case, we better look ahead. Let's start by getting you to dry land, right, little fella? (laughs) That laugh gave it all away. This child, who is his father? That's not for me to say. (laughs) Incredible. Please, I don't want anyone to know. Right, understood. In fact, you're probably wise Seraphos is a small island and people love to gossip. When we reach shore, it might be best to say that I'm your uncle, taking care of you and your son after your husband was lost at sea. How does that sound? You would do that for us? My life is a simple one, but you are my guest now. Of course, I will share what I have. Thank you, uncle. Let's get you both warm and fed. You must be hungry. My home is just a few steps from the docks. I know, it's small. Just a little seaside hut. Bed, chairs, table. Rough around the edges. I know. I don't get many visitors. But I do eat well. Here, try this. It's my favorite fish stew. Ooh, careful. It's hot. Mm. Mm. This is delicious. Have you always lived alone? Do you have any family? Only a brother. (laughs) Half-brother, in fact. Polydectes. Actually, he's the king of Seraphos, but you're better off avoiding him as long as you can. Oh. Kidding, kidding. (laughs) Only kidding, of course. We're just... different. (laughs) (laughs) Spoiler alert. He isn't kidding. Anyway, King Polydectes keeps his distance and I keep mine. He can be a bit, uh, difficult. 
understatement in this family. Dictus got all the decency, and Polydectes got all the power. I know this place isn't much to deny, but there's a bed for you and Perseus by the fire. Thank you for all of your kindness. I don't want to impose, but we have nowhere else to go. Well, it can be lonely with only the sea, so I truly appreciate your company. And you'll be talking any minute now, won't you, my boy? I wonder what you'll make of all this. The old fisherman cared for Denai and Perseus as if they were his own family, and mother and son found peace for the first time in their short but turbulent lives. Yet, for Perseus, enormous questions remained. At breakfast with his mother a few years later. Why are you pouting, Perseus? Not pouting. Thinking. Want to share your thoughts? I'm wondering about my dad. What about him? Who was he? What was he like? Well, when I met your father, I was young. It was a cold and stormy day. Wind howled, thunder crashed, and rain poured in through the skylight. Water began to pool on the floor, and I curled up on my bed, trying to stay warm. And then, suddenly, the sun came out, and in the light, the drops of rain shone like gold. I'd been so lonely and afraid, but then he found me. He made me laugh. I hadn't laughed in as long as I could remember. It felt too good to be true. <laughs> Every time I hear thunder, I think of him. I've always loved thunder. I see a lot of him in you, my little hero. Hmm. Within a few years, Perseus honed his strength at sea, where he learned to fish under the expert eye of his uncle Dictus. All right, Perseus, grab the net like this. See, it's quite heavy, so take your time and be sure you've got a good grip before you. Whoa! <laughs> well, uh, yes, exactly like that. Now the next part is tricky. We'll haul it in together. Hold here. No worries. I can do it. <clears throat> you certainly will come in handy during octopus season. Hey, Uncle. Can I ask you something? Of course. Anything. Do you ever feel like there's something missing? Like there's something you're meant to be doing, but you don't exactly know what it is? Oh, I feel that all the time. But then your mother's quick to tell me all the chores I've forgotten. I mean it, Uncle. It's like there's something on the tip of my tongue. Something I'm supposed to do, like something bigger. Something with purpose, not just fishing. No offense. I know. The life of a fisherman is humble. And I like it fine. It's just that, is a fisherman really everything I am? Perseus, I may not know much, but I do know that if fate has something in store for you, you couldn't miss it if you tried. Thanks, Uncle. Ah, yes, our hero of the nets. But while Perseus hauled in the day's fish, King Polydectes was scheming to reel in a catch of his own. The king began to visit the shoreline more often, lingering near his brother's hut, annoying Denai with oily smiles. One day, Polydectes strode down to the docks where Perseus was cleaning the day's catch. Though Perseus was barefoot, he was already taller than the king. Perseus hummed while he chopped, scaled, and gutted. <laughs> What a jaunty tune! King Polydectes! Oh, sorry, I'm a bit fishy. I'd expect nothing less of a fisherman. Well, fisher boy. <laughs> 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 
Yes, you must be wondering to what you owe the honor of my presence in these peasant parts. Uh, yes, your grace. Um, to what do you, uh, I owe the honor of, wow, tongue twister, of your present parts coming to peasant... Uh, Glad you asked. I have a gift for you. Really? I am honored. Yes, yes, you are. The gift is marriage to me. That is so kind, but I'm actually only 14. Not you, you little cuttlefish. Your mother. Lowly, yes. But I've watched you both for years. How hard your lives are in my brother's squalid little hut. How lonely she is now that you're growing up. So I've decided to take her off your hands. Oh, my mother? You want to marry my mother. But wait, are you asking my permission? Well, that is the tradition. Even if it makes no earthly sense for a king to ask anything of a fisher boy. I'm sure she'd be flattered, your grace. But to be real with you, she said many, many times that she'll never marry. Is that so? Yeah, your grace. I guess she just wants a low-key life, you know? How quaint. Well, I'll give her time to reconsider. I can't wait. The things I want do come to me, one way or another. Gods. <laughs> what a jerk. jerk. One day, the king's guard knocked sharply at the door of their hut, leaving a letter. Sweet deny. I, the great King Polydectes of Seraphos, command your presence at my party. And as tribute to their king, every guest must bring a horse. Ooh, a party. Well, it could be worse. What are you talking about, Mom? You don't want to party with Polydectes. Remember when he asked to marry you? No way. And what kind of king asks for a gift horse? There's something seriously shady about this guy. Mm-mm. You can't go. Perseus, he's a king. He commanded me. Of course I must go. Why is your presence mandatory, but not uncle's or mine? Just send him a note. Say you're sick or something. Say that unless he'll accept the seahorse, he's out of luck. He knows we don't have a horse or the money to buy one. That's why he set this as the price. So I would have to go alone. Son, he's rich, and, and we're, we're poor. poor, and this is a world ruled by men of means and power. I know, I know. You've told me that a million times, but this is messed up. Of course it is. Polydectes is acting on a whim, but he is a king. And believe me, I know kings. He's not going to marry a woman with no money. He'll throw his party, he'll enjoy his fantasy, and he'll choose someone far more suitable. Trust me, I'll be back home soon, and we'll all get on with our lives. I don't know, Mom. I don't like it. I know. I love you, Perseus. Uncle, wish me luck. May the gods be with you. Uncle, why does she have to go? I can't stand this. I don't like it any better than you do, but there's nothing to do but wait. Perseus, we can't go to the king's party without a gift. Yeah, no. I'm not letting mom go in there alone. No way. Perseus, you can't charge into the king's palace like a mad bull. Take a moment to think. I'm done thinking and waiting and wishing everything was different without ever actually doing anything about it. I don't care what Polydectes does. He can't have my mom. Deny, my dear. You are more ravishing than ever. I find myself amused when I remember how you looked when you arrived on my island. Thin, disheveled, ragged, to be honest. But you blossomed in my kingdom. You flatter me, King Polydectes. I do, don't I? <laughs> but tell me, where is my horse? 
Your Grace, I must apologize. My son and uncle are poor fishermen. We don't have a horse to give. No? Oh, what a shame. Hmm. I suppose we can make some other arrangement. Let's see how to settle this debt. I know. You shall marry me instead. Marry you? Your Grace, I have nothing. No dowry. Ah, oh, no. no. You're as lovely as any brood mare. Excuse me? Ew. What's that smell? Is that the boy from the docks? Mom! Perseus, what are you doing here? Little fisher boy. How unexpected. Your mother just told me you have no horse. But here you are. Clearly you must have found one after all. No, your grace. I don't have a horse. No? Then what on earth made you think you could attend my party? I bring you something better than a horse, your grace. I bring... I bring my services. I offer my services. Excuse me? A task, a favor, any favor in the world. Fish for a year, a nice new seawall, I'm great with rocks. You name it, I'll do it. Perseus! But that gift will wipe out any debt for me and my mother both. <laughs> What a sweet idea. I accept. Fish, rocks, I have plenty of those. I have plenty of everything. Ah, I know. Bring me the head of the Gorgon Medusa. <gasps> this boy against Medusa. She turns warriors to stone with one glance. Done. No, Perseus, absolutely not. I do not give my blessing for this. Shh, deny. The men are speaking. <sighs> now, I quite like your son's idea. And who am I to look a gift horse in the mouth? Yes, bring me the head of Medusa. And when you fail, well, your mother will make an acceptable substitute. That will never happen. Never. You just watch. Medusa's head will be yours. Okay, cool. I got this. I can use a cutting knife and throw a fiction net and... And I have no idea how to even find Medusa, let alone kill her. Oh, gods, I'm sunk. No, you really are, brother. To epic depths. Whoa, wait. Who are you? Who indeed? <laughs> Tune in next time to see if Perseus ever finds out. Oh, father! Would you clap two times if I'm telling the truth? Thanks so much for listening. Live from Mount Olympus is produced by the Onassis Foundation. Our executive producer is Karen Brooks Hopkins. This series was created by Julie Burstein and the Onassis Foundation. Julie Burstein is our producer, and Zoe Dolan is senior project manager. The series is co-produced by the Brooklyn-based theater ensemble, The Team. Our directors are Rachel Chapkin and Jalen Levingston. And our actors are Viney Burroughs, Jill Fruitkin, Divine Garland. There's something seriously shady about this guy. Amber Gray, Modesto Flacco Jimenez, Libby King, Ian Lassiter. Not you, you little cuttlefish. Jalen Levingston. Christina Liberis. Nehemiah Luckett. Jake Margolin. What in the name of Olympus? James Harrison Monaco. Kristen C. Jillian Walker. Excuse me? Baby Perseus is played by Calvin Samuel Blanche and Whit Vega Margolin Vaughn. <laughs> and Andre DeShield is Hermes. Lovely to know you're tuning in to my God's Pod too. The team's producing director is Alexandra Lalonde and associate producer is Laura Elliott. This episode was written by Alexi Basil. Our story editor is Nalini Jones. Sound design and audio production by David Shulman. 
Magda Gianniku composed and performed our music with help from Luca Bordenaro. Jason Adam Katzenstein created our illustrations, and we had graphic design by Onassis Creative Studios. Thanks to our creative advisors, Crystal Bob Simple, Dr. Michael Cohen, Dr. Simon Critchley, Max Friedlich, Dr. Young Richard Kim, Effie Sielchu, and business advisor, Laura Walker. We had production assistance from Lucas Miller, Letitia West, and Tessa Zitter. Learn more about the Olympian gods and the wonderful voices behind them at onassis.link slash Olympus. <laughs> Magnificent, Apollo. Since 1975, the Onassis Foundation has been dedicated to culture, community, and education with projects that can effectively inspire social change and justice across borders. Learn more at onassis.org. Mmm, nice footwear, Hermes. Onassis Foundation. Let's be honest. Growing up, we all break rules. Yep. Sometimes, we're stirring up mischief. I used to steal my little sister's tooth fairy money. Sometimes, we're trying to spark change. I fought the school board to be the first girl on the wrestling team. And other times, we're just testing boundaries. I lied to my parents about who broke the window. The dog did it! From the makers of Mortified and the awesome people at Trax, a new network from PRX. Oh, I love public radio. With support from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Whoa, the Sesame Street people? Comes a brand new podcast for tweens called... Ooh, you're in trouble. A show about the moments we become rebels, rule breakers, rascals, or even revolutionaries. So, how can I be on it? If you're 10 to 25, visit listentotrouble.com. Support for Tracks comes from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. This is Tracks from PRX.